Hi, I'm Peter Erskine. That was a hi-hat beat. Very simple. And as simple as it is, I think it demonstrates something that uh, I've come to realize is uh, not only, I think, very important for any drummer to be able to do, uh, but something that I'm enjoying doing more and more, which is the act of playing simply and playing to the best of my ability. So. Uh, the reason I mention it because very often we tend to think of drumming and the best of our ability in terms of uh, pushing the limit and uh, that could be in terms of, of speed or complexity um, and yet most often when I'm working with other musicians the complex stuff uh, there's, there's, there, there's, there are small opportunities for me to do that. Uh, hopefully well-chosen moments in the music. Uh, but most of the time, uh, we're just part of the story. We're not the center of the story. So when you're part of the story, and as you're telling the story, the story has to begin, well, like any story, once upon a time. I'm here at the Berklee College of Music doing a three-day residency uh, thanks to the support of the uh, Zildjian Cymbal Company and this is the Armin Zildjian Residency. Uh, and I just gave a class and I demonstrated something to the class that I played. I had the honor of working with the great film composer John Williams. And it was kind of a high pressure session we were about 40 musicians there, best musicians in Los Angeles, and I was excited and honored to be there. Uh, John doesn't write so often for a drum set nowadays, uh, but here I was in the middle of the small orchestra playing drum set, and it was about a four minute cue, or piece of music, and it's uh, the main title for uh, a new Steven Spielberg film called The Adventures of Tintin. And the tempo was one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And what did I play for four minutes? Okay, one, two, ready, go. For four minutes. Now, that's not easy to do for four minutes. And to do it at the precise dynamic marking that's notated in the music, uh, at one point, it got fancy and it went from the hi hat. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And so on. Now, if one of those taps was a little loud, a little out of rhythm, it stuck out like a sore thumb. And we did enough takes until Maestro John Williams was satisfied that it was perfect. And he even told us, he said, don't attempt to add interpretation to this beyond what's written. Play exactly and specifically what's notated, the dynamics, et cetera. Don't add any accents, any phrasing. The feeling will all come out if we all obey the music, as it were. Um, and, and this sense of, of honoring the music, whether it's carefully notated, as in the case of this John Williams score, or um, for improvising, playing with a band. Our job is to provide rhythmic information to the music and, of course, to the other musicians. Um, if you're playing in an ensemble, this might involve doing setups. Uh, I've always thought of it in terms of preparing the musicians to play their next phrase. Uh, but I realized that we're also preparing the listeners for what's coming next. Um, so drumming is, is not just a, a matter of physical ability 
and learning the coolest, you know, bunch of flicks and, and putting them into a library and then just pulling one, uh, one after the other off the shelf. It's, it takes a little bit more patience and if you have the patience it's a lot more fun because when you do introduce something and that something has to it has to has to be meaningful in the context of the music and at a certain point if the musical intensity and emotion builds up you really want to say it with feeling not I really want to say it with feeling you really want to say it with feeling you know and Play something that explodes. Well, you you've created the groundwork to do that. So, uh, the best way to learn how to play simply is to practice simply. So, for my friends in this house in Milan, Italy, try this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Just play quarter notes on the hi hat. And notice how much arm, wrist, and finger motion I'm using. Not very much. Just enough to play these quarter notes. They're consistent. That's important because when you're playing a beat, you can't change tempo and we can't have accents where we don't want them or mean them to be. So I recommend practicing on a hi-hat because you're not distracted by the sustain of the cymbal and you're not tempted. That's all fun stuff, but if you can't do this, then that other stuff at best will just be a bad imitation of a good drummer. You want to be the good drummer, not an imitation. Now, let's add the syncopation or the jazz ride beat to this. So basically, I'm just going to play a pickup to this quarter note pulse. And you hear how the quarter note stays the same. So, doing this exercise on the hi hat, I call it the truth o meter, or the truthometer. It enables you to hear exactly how clear your pulse is, how steady it is, and what your swing beat feels like. Now, it's easy to swing a whole band with. That's fun. But can you swing a whole band with? If you can swing a band with just one stick, then I think you know how to swing. So that's the orientation that all my students at the University of Southern California, where I teach, that's how we start off our studies just working on a quarter note pulse, and then eventually moving it over to the ride cymbal. Okay. Once you have that under reasonable control, it's feeling good. Then you want to practice at different tempos, not just that same tempo that you like to practice everything at. So slower.
faster. And then you want to be able to add basic, we use the word independence, but basic coordinated comping rhythms, accompanying rhythms on the snare drum and or bass drum uh, that help to propel the beat and the music along without interfering with this ride cymbal beat. If the ride cymbal beat changes, either in intensity or the actual rhythm, and you don't intend for that change to happen, then you're not doing yourself or the music any, any favors.